Rising Mystics, welcome to the Rising Mystics Master's Class. It is both a great honor and privilege to have every single one of you here tonight. To those across the world who are not able to be with us tonight, we just pray the blessings of Yahweh upon you before you even click on the link. Um, I just want to bring some things to our attention. Um, when Prophet, time comes when the Prophet asks if there's any questions to please show a raising of your hands. He's not actually looking at your cameras to see who's raising their hands. What he's looking for is um, what I'm about to explain. So if you look at your computer screen, if you're on a computer, I don't know how it looks like on a phone, but on your computer, if you're looking at it, down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see all these icons. Starting from your left to the right, you'll see mute stop our start video invite participants chat record leave meeting if you go to participants and you click on the participant um, icon down at the very bottom it gives all the list of names and down at the very bottom you'll see mute me on your left and raise hand on your right that's what he's looking for if you just clicked on the raise hand it will show next to your name on the list of your name that you have your hand raised so just to bring that to everybody's attention, um, so happy to be here on Mystical Monday, guys. It's amazing, learning so much, we're growing so much. It's a maturing process. So if you don't get everything at once, just know that you are growing into it every day. It sits inside of you as wrong. Later, later before you know it, it's gonna pop back up and all these things, you'll be like, oh, I remember this, I remember this. And then the teaching goes on from there. Remember, there's those who plant, those who water. God causes the growth. So in last session, um, Prophet was talking about angels. And, you know, angels are a very, very amazing beings that God has created. I love all the angels. The Bible says that God created an innumerable amount of angels. In other words, you cannot count them. So let's make sure that we're always engaging them. Like every day in the morning, I wake up what I used to do. I haven't done it here in a minute, but I need to start the practice up back up is um, I would, you know, wake up, give my thanks and praise to God for another day to be awake and to make a change into this world. And then as soon as I'm done doing that, I would just activate my angels. I say, angels, I love you. Good morning. Thank you for being around me because we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, angels and so many other things. You're constantly being watched no matter what you're doing. So, you know, I just I, I thank them. I just say, hey, you guys, I activate you. Um, I love you and um, let's get this thing started because you know what, maybe sometimes they're just standing around bored. You never know, right? So why don't you say, hey, what's going on? What's your name? Because the name usually tells of their function. So um, just starting out with that, guys, and without further ado, I give you Prophet John. Greetings, everybody. Hi. Can you guys hear me out there? Yay, great, great, great. We just want to welcome you to Mystic Monday again, Rising Mystic Masterclass, the Rising Mystic Institute. We just appreciate all of you for coming out tonight. And those of you that are yet coming in, we realize it is a holiday. And uh, I, I, I forget sometimes. And it is a holiday. And we're yet uh, just pressing in. And we want to just thank you for coming. And those of you that will be watching later, uh, we know that you will be blessed also. And thank you, Johnny, for sharing that and reminding us to just uh, utilize the angels that the Lord has given us and that we can communicate with them. And we have been talking about that over the past few weeks, just really, uh, you know, getting acquainted with them. And I've gotten some really interesting um, emails and chats and text messages from people uh, where angels are actually revealing their names to them. And so it's just amazing seeing what is happening, you know, as we just uh, uh, just activate these things and just do uh, what we are, are or, or just saying, putting it into practice. It really does work and you will be blessed by it. Also, as Jenny said, that you, know, you don't have to just grasp everything that you're hearing at once. It's okay, and, uh, but you are, you're getting it. It's being deposited within your spirit, and at the appointed time, spirit will make the connection, and it'll just be an aha moment. It'll just be, I got it, and it'll just begin to manifest within you, and that's the way it happens, but these are like seeds that are being planted. One plants, another waters, but uh, Yahweh, the Lord God, gives the increase, and we just thank him for that. We want to just shout out to you that are on the East Coast. We realize that some of you will be having weather tonight. I've gotten a phone call from 
uh, some that may not be able to be on due to weather, the winds coming in from the hurricanes, and we are praying. And matter of fact, why don't we just, just say a little prayer right now? We've been praying ever since uh, the hurricane uh, came uh, on, and uh, it was announced rather, and just pushing it back into the sea. And so, Father, right now, we just pray for those, God, in the coastal area. We pray for those in Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, and all along that region that will be affected by the storm surge, the waves, the, 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 the rain, and all of those things. We just pray your divine protection over them, over their properties, their animals, in the name of Yeshua, and cause everyone to do what they need to do to be safe. And we continue to pray, and we speak to Dorian, the child of the sea. We speak to Dorian and we command her to stay in the sea. We don't permit her to touch land. We command her to stay in the sea in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you for it. And we praise you, God, for safety for all of those that are in those regions. And we pray also for those in the Bahamas that took a direct hit, that you will cover them with your mercy, with your blood. And we just dispatch angels to just minister to them and all of those homes that were destroyed. And we know that you're the God of restoration. And so we just release your divine angels of restoration to go and to help those people and many that are feeling God why did this happen? And some of them had just built homes. Some of them had just moved into homes and now they have to start all over again. But we thank you for God, the lives uh, uh, that were saved and, and, and that the, the impact of loss of lives was minimum. And we just thank you that all of these natural things, the material things can be restored, but life, God is so important. And we thank you for protecting them. Those that were affected also somewhat in parts of Puerto Rico, we thank you, God, for your presence. And we just bless them with the blessings of El Elyon, God the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. So we are just uh, here tonight and we just thank you uh, again for coming. I want to just tell you out here in Arizona where I'm at, uh, a friend of mine from Columbia sent me this. And I guess it is cooler there than it is here. And see if you can read that. <laughs> For those of you that may not be able to see it, it says, says here that you should be in hell. But since you live in Arizona, we'll count it as time served. <laughs> So, uh, so we thank God. <laughs> Scripture says he won't leave our souls in hell. And Arizona can be like hell. Sometimes it's so hot. But we thank God for that also. Uh, we're just going to have an awesome time tonight. And we thank uh, God for uh, Buddy, the, the Buddha from Mississippi, that's with us again tonight. And he pressed his way. He got a, a phone call earlier and uh, almost wasn't able to make it. But he decided to just come on anyway. And so we really appreciate that. And uh, many of you, I believe, that are on tonight were here in phase one when he came on and uh, he just blessed us. And we know that he's going to be a blessing again tonight. And so we want you to expect and to just receive. And we're just going to have fun. Let me go and find Buddy now and open up his mic here. Buddy, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm looking for you. You got your uh, cam on? Uh, yeah. You do? Okay. I don't know why I'm not seeing you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight. I can see you now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming out tonight. We just really appreciate you. And uh, it's been a while since you were here. We're in phase three now. You were here in phase one when we started off. Uh, back in, I think it was like late last year you came, or maybe early this year, or something like that. January. And, oh, it was in January. Okay, great, great, great. And you were just on your way for your long vacation. Can you tell us a little bit about the vacation? I, I know you were sending pictures and you were posting pictures and making me jealous out, out there as you were windsurfing and having all that fun in the Caribbeans. And uh, uh, what are some of the things that you encountered out there? Well, I was in Jamaica. Okay. And, um, the Jamaican culture is is something that uh, either you love or you don't like. Uh -huh. I love it, and um, I have a ball every time I go. But uh, 
I don't know. Uh, when it gets cold, January, February, March, I uh, I go to hurting it in uh, my back. I have a back injury. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, been with me for quite a while. We haven't got a complete total heal healing of it, but um, I went too hard this summer on the bicycle after I got back from Jamaica, and I got a type of uh, uh, tendonitis in the lower back that's causing my uh, right leg to tingle. Okay. But now kiteboarding is is it's really not that hard on your on your body unless you're crashing, and if you're going to do it, you're going to crash. But um. To answer your question, uh, yeah, I'm blessed to have uh, enough health to be able to do what I want to do when I get ready to do it. But it's your body is something that a lot of people think they got no control over. But we do. We have control over our health. And if we get something that seems to be a block or well, what evidently what I have is some type of blockage within my system, within my heart and chakra. And, you know, the root chakra is down by the, you know, the back, the back. And um, so I check in with spirit all the time. But uh, as far as the health, yeah, we speak life or death with the tongue. Yeah, you're talking about your back. And uh, I just remembered that Dr. Vargas, I'm going to have to introduce you to him. He's a back specialist, naturopathic doctor, mm -hmm. uh, back and spine specialist. And he's having great results. Uh, people come from South America, Canada, all over the U.S., uh, you know, to, uh, you know, for consultation and for his services. And he actually uh, developed this, a very high-tech machine uh, that's not invasive. Uh, that I don't know what all it does, but he's a chiropractic back and spine specialist, naturopathic doctor. He's having great results. Matter of fact, next week he's going to be here with us. And so I'm going to get you uh, in contact with him because I think that that's going to help, help you. Now, you, you talked about you went on a bike ride, but you didn't really say you went practically all across the country, right? Well, I, I covered quite a bit of difference, diff distance, but it's uh, right here in my backyard. Okay. I ride uh, from Ozark, Missouri to Rogersville, Missouri, which is 15 miles. But once I get there, then I lap uh, County Line Road in 186. It's like a big rectangle. And uh, so today was my first ride in uh, over four weeks. Uh, pretty much right at 32, 33 days, uh, I've let my back rest, but I did start swimming. So I've been, that seems to help the back. But, um, yes, I'm, I'm actually contemplating going to a chiropractor here locally. Great. Sometimes we need adjusting. <laughs> yes, we do, we do. You gotta get that energy flowing right. <laughs> yeah, yeah and I, I'm, I'm a strong believer that, um, that we can speak to our DNA, our cells, our atoms. And uh, the man mentioned uh, archangels. Well, when I'm saying my uh, mantra, when I'm actually in that modality, I wake up in the morning and I, I do it during the day when I'm riding the bike or even when I'm swimming. I'm in a state of meditation even. And people say, well, you can't meditate riding a bike or swim. Yeah, you can. <laughs> we, we are a meditation. We are a prayer. We're constantly in prayer. We're constantly either either out of our mind or in our mind. And sometimes you you get back centered when you actually speak about the archangels. And I say Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Metatron, Uriel, any other archangel known or unknown that can assist with this upcoding of the codons of love and light coming from the central sun of the Milky Way galaxy to impact these atoms, these cells, and become. I, I want you to repeat that again and speak a little bit louder. I just say that again. Uh, I, that was very important. I think that people need to hear that. Well, it's, a, it's just a mantra. You can use the, the words that match with you, but we were talking about the archangels. 
So I usually start off with uh, Archangel, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Metatron, Uriel, any Archangel known or unknown that can assist with the upcoding and uploading of the codons of light and love coming from the central sun of the Milky Way galaxy, which in turn is awakening the photons being released from the center of each atom within this body temple mm. to align it and adjust it and become what I say I am. And I say I am becoming younger and younger, stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier, able to do the things that most people dream that they want to do, but they still got to go through the work and the effort. So I speak it to myself and um, my body cooperates except for I'm learning this little situation with the, with the back. It's not painful, but now in the winter time when it gets January, February, uh, here it gets really cold in February. And um, the cold weather tends to hurt me really bad. I actually got injured uh, 2005 and um, it's a type of stenosis down in L4, and L3 and S1, I think that's what they call it. And it's something that can't be operated on. Even at that time, uh, there wasn't no technologies that could actually do anything. So over the years, I've got, a, I've got to take care of uh, maybe a chiropractor, a type of sports medicine doctor is, is something that can help, but I've been taking anti-inflammatories. I'm totally against uh, any type of drugs or pain medicines because I'm a recovering drug and alcoholic and uh, I've been drug free for this past May was 30 years. So I was 28 when I got off drugs. Wow, so you've been drug free for 28 years, drug and alcohol free. Yep, and I had actually started drinking when I was 11 and 12 mm. and started smoking cigarettes. I was smoking three and four packs a day. I was 28 when uh, I had a, a, a type of awakening. And um, it's one of the crisis points in my life where I, I cried out for help and literally I... It's a long story, but to tell it, to tell it the way it is, uh, is it, it might sound kind of crazy. So I don't know how much of it you want me to tell. Well, it's, it's not going to sound crazy to us. You can just give us the bits and pieces. I, and I wanted to just uh, underscore that because I know that, that, you know, we live in a society where a lot of people are struggling with addiction, substance abuse and stuff. Even, you know, they're trying to live the spiritual life, but they can't seem to uh, get out of it, you know? And so, and when I hear someone that's been free as long as you have, you know, I want them to know, you know, they may have heard, they've seen us, but you know, that God did it for you. You uh, got a hold of God, as you said, cried out to God and you were able to overcome by the God power within you. And so they can do the same thing. Well, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit. Um, I've talked about it on different videos on my YouTube channel. I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of mental problems uh, in my early life because of the being developmentally delayed and having uh, profound learning disabilities, dyslexia, dyscalculus, and it just made me where I couldn't you know, fit in, in in society or school. And um, that's where the drinking came in. And that's where um, doing things to try to be popular. But at the same time, I, I was going down the road of drugs. So by the time I was 15, 16, I was uh, introduced to pain pills and quaaludes. We called them quaaludes back then. And it just, I just kind of spun out of control. At 19 and a half, I attempted suicide. It was a cry for help. That's, mm -hmm. you know, because if it had been a suicide, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So I have to say what it was. But at that time, I didn't get my body uh, cleaned out. And as far as um, being supernaturally delivered, let me tell you this, brother, I was. 
I was under a bridge in Greenwood, Mississippi, in the Yazoo River on the bank of it. And it was January. It was like zero degrees. It was, if I'd have slipped into the water with all the clothes I had on, I would have drowned within minutes. But um, I looked up at the bridge embutment underneath the bridge and the beams of concrete. And I said, God, if you're real, I, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to ask you for some help or I'm fixing to slide right off of this mud into this water. The next thing I know, I'm looking up at the street light in a parking lot right outside of the hospital, which was over 300 yards away from the bridge on Highway 82 in Greenwood, Mississippi. Now, a man pulled up in a golf cart and he, he knew I was in bad shape. So I was saved that night with that, but I didn't get my identity in Christ and I kept doping. So I did find a wife, got married and I had two little babies. And at 28, I had another type of episode where I had lost job after job after job and just got depressed. And to the point that um, I, I had literally did too much uh, it was hard drugs and marijuana and the drinking on top of everything. And so that night, um, I, I, let me explain this. These things are loops and cycles. Yes. And so what had happened is, I got a scar on this wrist. I had a knife. I had broke this hand, the right hand, by running my wife out of the house with that. Didn't hit her, but I hit the walls. <laughs> and it was big, it was swolled up. But when I had the butcher knife, I was able to cut this, this right here. And I was so mad at myself because I couldn't cut it deep, but I do have the scar. And so I spun that knife around and I plunged it into my chest, but it hit the breastbone and it bounced out. So when I bent down to pick up that knife, I see my, at that time, she was three, maybe three and a half year old daughter. And she was standing there looking at me. She grabbed her hair and screamed and took off running. And in my drunken, uh, doped up stupor, I started seeing a vision of my daddy at a table doing the same stupid stuff to his his body. Mm. I knew when I was stumbling down the hallway, I knew what I would see. I would see her underneath a bed looking up at me. Mm. And when I made that eye contact with her, I, I must have OD'd and literally I was in the hospital. And I'm, now, I've been in, in a drug-induced coma for three days. I got a man asking me, who is the president? Who is the vice president? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like just now waking it up trying to realize, I, you know, who I was and what I was. And I looked at him and I, I knew that I knew enough about mental health uh, psychiatry at that time <laughs> to know that he was a doctor trying to put me in a state hospital called Whitfield in Mississippi. So I told him, I said, look, I'm under the influence of a lot of drugs and medication. Could you possibly come back later? And that's when I realized that I must have looked like total hell. I had been depressed for like four months or five months and I hadn't shaved or anything. So I, I'm strapped down to the bed and this orderly, he said, Mr. Huggins, as soon as the guy walked out, he said, Mr. Huggins, that man is trying to put you in Whitfield. <laughs> I said, it sounds like he, it, 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 he might would do it. And I said, if you would unlock me from this straps and get me some razors and some uh, something to shave with, I'm going to clean up. And when he comes back, I'm going to answer them questions. Now get this, brother. When I looked into the mirror and I'm shaving, I made eye contact with myself. Mm. And I had a knowing that I would never drink again. I'd never smoke again and dope again. All of it was gone. 
and mm. just so I actually quit a three to four pack a day habit, drink a fifth of whiskey every two days, smoked as much marijuana as I could get my hands on, and take anything that was a pain pill. Mm. The downers is what they the, the effect I was looking for. So that was 28 years old and everything fell away. The taste of alcohol, the taste of beer, the taste of the dope, except the cigarettes. After the first six, the first 30 days, it, I still had the, the desire to smoke cigarettes. After 60 days, it got way better but I didn't get my identity in Christ. I just started cleaning my body up. I even quit coffee, caffeine, and for a very long time, I even quit drinking any types of pops, and drinks like sodas. And uh, then <laughs> cleaning up is a good thing, but I still didn't have my identity in Christ. And so at at August the 17th, 2003, how would that put me? Um, I, I'm 58 now, so it's been quite it's been quite a few years since 2003. But that time I cried out for God and and I got my identity in Christ with the resurrected power of the I am, and I ain't been the same since. Uh, I find it that I am still have symptoms of mental illness. I still have symptoms of depression. They call me bipolar, manic depressive. They can call me whatever they want to call me. <laughs> we I are got, our thoughts. I if, got if symptoms of change, mental illness also. If you can't change your thinking, you, you, you'll be whatever they call you. But uh, yeah. I know I'm an overcomer and uh, I have to suffer with what I have to suffer through in this reality uh, because uh, their corruption is in the DNA. The corruption is in this physical form and the contamination is within this environment. The microwave energy, the mind control energy, the negativity of how we are being lied to. And it's it, the whole system is set up for us to be split brain. So I'm not the only schizophrenic type personality. <laughs> I think everybody that came into this incarnation has a, a tendency to be schiz, schiz, schizophrenia. Not full-blown schizophrenia, you, you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's a type of uh, left brain, uh, right brain, mind control system that keeps us from being able to connect the gap. Mm -hmm. And once we connect the gap, then we actually realize that it's it, the brain is not what we've ever been told. Um, when I did wake up, uh, 2003, August the 17th, one of the first things that I realized was that my mind was completely still. Hmm. And what I was actually able to do was stop even seeing and hearing with my mind, but, Fill it with my heart and literally see with my heart. And so that changed, that changed everything. And if I get in a tight situation right now, even to this day, like the phone call earlier and the situations that come up in our life on a daily basis, um, they ain't nothing worse than trying to take your own life three times in one life cycle without understanding who you really are. Mm -hmm. Now that I know who I am, whatever type of situation comes up, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It doesn't have any power unless we give it power. Can it take me down to my knees? Yeah. <laughs> Can it make me cry, you know, for God? And, and yeah. And it, it, but ultimately, that too will pass, and if I can help anybody, I'm shocked. How you know? I, how can I help anybody? I, here I am, into this beautiful awakening, and I can let, I can let something you know make me really question my sobriety and everything all over again. 
So that's what I'm saying. These things are loose. It's a, it's a cycle that we get ourselves into and we get ourselves out of. And so when we have to ask for help from Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Metatron, Uriel, any Archangel known or unknown to me that could assist, yeah, it's a good thing to know that you can ask for help. Wow, that's good. That's powerful. Well, you said a whole lot there, you know, and just want to just touch on a few of the things that you said. And uh, you said every, all of us that are here in this space, in this world, we are somewhat schizophrenic and we see that within our brain because we have the left and right brain hemisphere and we have this whole construct of duality. And so, uh, and you said about you, you yet have some symptoms of mental illness. I said, I do too, you know, <laughs> because see the world, they think we're crazy. You know, they think that we're totally out of our mind because of the life that we live and what we believe and what we know. We are in this world, but not of this world. And our whole thinking and ways of doing things and processing is different and it's becoming more different than the world because we're not of that system. We have unplugged from that system like the matrix, you know, we've unplugged from that, you know, we're no longer there anymore. And you mentioned something uh, also that I think a lot of people are not aware of is that uh, that there are agendas that are taking place all around us, that, that we're here, but there are overlords, if you will. There are others that, that like to control us, and they do it very subtly. And you mentioned about microwaves and various things like that. And uh, maybe you want to go a little bit deeper on showing how the mind control is not just with the political system or the media, but there's some much more subtle ways of mind control that's taking place. It is, and it's, 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 it's been building up for a very long time, but the technology is what's driving it now. Mm -hmm. I've never owned a cell phone. A lot of people think, you know, that's just ironic is that I'm, I don't own a cell phone, don't want one. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is because I, at early in 1993, I actually met a guy that told me he'd come off a DARPA project. He was CIA. He, he literally told me that something was in the works that and described what it was going to be. But 1996, he looked at me and said, never own one. And I, I, I never owned one. But come to pass is, is, is what, we're, what we're saying is, it's a technology. Um, they were using different forms of technology back in the turn of the century. When they put cigarettes on everybody, that was a type of mind control. Yes. And yes. They, they did it with advertising, but no fancy technology. And it accomplished what it was meant to accomplish. It messed up people's lives. And you, you remember by watching old movies from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, everybody was smoking. And so it, it's, I'm saying that to tell you, even a couple of hundred years before that, they had their other methods of controlling people's minds. Mm -hmm. And now that we've got uh, cell phones, we're moving from 1G, 2G, 3G into 5G. Exactly, yeah. It's too, it's getting to be too much. Mm -hmm. So the disclosure is starting to come out slowly about 5G and what it means to have that type of radiation mm -hmm. on your body all the time. And get this, these young children, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, they put their cell phone in their front pockets. Yeah. And I, I know for a fact, I, I, I can't get uh, the administrators of the school system to give me any factual numbers because it's privacy, but I can tell you this, yes, the high yes. school girls are not getting pregnant, mm -hmm. and it's a, bi a biological plan mm -hmm. is to eliminate the birth rate of Christ conscious beings that are, are, are actually designed with the Almighty to come in. Mm -hmm. So they're having to come in in other ways. They're having to 
that's that's a deep story when I say they come in other ways because they come in as a walk in. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 a possibility and then uh, it's it's to the point that it's getting to be obvious yes. that the the news media has not got our best interest in mind. That's right. And the, and the system of the whole the whole world is under that type of ability to tell us tell a story, that tell a lie, and tell it often enough, and enough people get mind belief in their reality and not into the facts. The facts are that there we are good people and other people around the world are not our enemies they are good people and when you get the good people together and we see who the enemy is then we'll find out that we've been lied to about so many things Mm -hmm. to keep us in separation duality and keep us striving in time I'm going to say this, and I hope everybody understands it. There is no lack. There is plenty. Yes. Everyone, every person on this planet should live in abundance and should not have to live in poverty to the scale that it is. It's so, it's so controlled. It's, it's, manufactured lack Mm -hmm. and and that's coming to the forefront that people are starting to see the evidence of it how money is squandered it says that money would be hoarded up by the unrighteous but i'll open up your window and pour out your blessing that your heart can't contain that's not necessarily money but that is the ability to realize that you're you're very loved and you're very taken care of and the false matrix system is coming down yes you know you really but coming down (laughs) you mentioned about the darpa project darpa and a lot of people don't know what that is but darpa is the defense advanced research project agency that started in 1955 and it, it, it operates independently from the military. It's like a covert operation, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. It's called DARPA. And they come up with all of these technologies and designs, just as Buddy was saying, uh, as his friend told him, never get one of those because they're coming up with these different things and it's very anti-human, like what he spoke about the cell phones of. Kids carrying them, young people carrying them in their pocket. The sperm count level goes down. You know, you don't. The the girls don't don't ovulate properly because of the radiation that's being admitted, and that's just another subtle way of population control and to prevent the Christ consciousness, as he said, from expanding on the earth. And uh, he talked about uh, just a couple other things there about mm, about the, the division. You know, in that. People are not bad people. That was so powerful what you said. You know, because you look at the news, you hear all of these politicians on every side, for, you know, all these people, you know, they're telling you these people are bad, these people are bad. We got to go and bomb them. We got to go and bomb them. And you, you stand back and you realize that there is something controlling these people. And that people, that is not the way humans really are, but there is a design, there is a plan to bring division because that's how they conquer. You divide people, have them fighting against each other, hating against each other, thinking there's two parties, Republican, Democrat, or whatever like that, you you know, and that's how they conquer us. And so uh, and it's all mind control, as, as, uh, as Buddy is saying here. And it's been that way for uh, thousands of years. That's true. And, yeah, when you, when uh, we say they, it's hard to understand how powerful these beings are. These, it's given to us in the word. They, it, they said the Nephilim fell to earth. These are creator gods. 
And these creator gods are, are very, very powerful, even more powerful than an archangel. Uh, they do exist. And so we're not waiting for an invasion from another dimension. This already here. I'm not going to say they come from outer space. I'm saying they're interdimensional beings that have been in control of this earth for a long time. And the corruption that they've done to us is in our DNA. Yes. And I, I will tell you that they have soul trapped us. Mm -hmm. And that's their intention is to feed off us. I know people go, well, that you really, you really talking crazy now. What no. do you mean they feed off of us? Uh, they literally can use the collective consciousness to drive a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And the proof is they tried it. They got everybody and their brother to run out and get boards in Florida. And I'm going to tell you this. They knew the path of that hurricane because the models were telling them it was going to stay offshore. But they didn't tell the people that. They told the people to prepare for the worst. Now, I'm not saying for nobody not to board up. What I was saying was, as you boarding up, go to speaking life exactly. and, and truth to the storm and speak that we are powerful. And as a collective consciousness, we see that they're steering it with the mass fear. And if, if enough of us hadn't to intervene or stepped in, we would be looking at a category five hit Miami. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what they've had able to do in the past. Katrina was a total driven yes. mega storm. It worked to perfection, but that was, you can't say these words on the internet anymore. You can't talk about harp. If you, if you do, your video ain't going to get seen by nobody. And if you talk about these creator gods in such a way that you really know who they are and you really can educate the mind of people, then they're going to come after your channel. They're going, they're going to come after your Facebook. And I can show you how all this works together. DARPA. Do you think Mark Zuckerberg came up with Facebook? Do you think <laughs> Bill Gates came up with Microsoft? Do you think YouTube and Google was started in a, <laughs> what do they call it, a garage? garage. <laughs> <laughs> it was started in DARPA. And it's been running, the internet's been running uh, ever since they figured out electricity. And they had to figure out all of this back engineering. Now, I can't tell you where all that engineering came from, but there is some evidence that our future selves were able to try to talk to our past selves. And in that, when they brought their selves in through time and space and their vehicles, that they, they're not Merkur box, they're not light bodies. These are, these are people that are our future selves. They, they got trapped. As long as they stayed in this dimension, they took on physical cap, physicality and their ships crashed. Well, they were the first ones to scoop up the technologies and they were the first ones to back engineer it. Get this, they already knew the technology. Mm -hmm. It's in the Ark of the Covenant. They had that stuff uh, only for the very, very high elites that were actually the servants to the creator gods. Mm -hmm. You get this, there's the people that we see in, on TV are not the creator gods. You can't see them. You can't, un you, 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 you can't phantom who they are, but the servants of them are the bloodlines that people talk about and say it's a conspiracy theory. No, it's a conspiracy fact. Their, their, their system of bloodline has kept those secrets and those technologies hidden from us. And plus, they erased history. Mm -hmm. They've totally done away with what, what we could actually see a path. There is no real path of history because the victors wrote it and they had us fighting for all these thousands of years. And the, the total chaos that was created was all fabricated there was no real reason to go to war for country and flag it's still to this day there's no but you can't say this to the wrong people they think the right and the left are <laughs> democrats and republicans now that's the that's that's a wing of a bird 
the right wing, left wing. See, it's in the words. It's in the way that we say phrases. And the, the manipulation is ridiculous to actually, I love the concept of America, but it's a lie. To believe in the American dream without understanding the control method of the mind control that they use is insanity. Yes. That yes. They could actually start a whole nother war. And I'm going to tell you something, since 2008, they have been trying to take us into thermonuclear war with that country called Iran. And get this, in 2008, 888, August the 8th, you can look at it on your calendars and your history books, Russia went to Ossetia in South Georgia mm -hmm. and was given intel to be there. And what they shot up is one of the reasons that my YouTube channel is, is totally banned and demonetized. And my I'm shadow banned on all of my stuff because I was telling people back in 2008 what was going on. To Mossad and get this black op military from the United States needed that air base to launch an attack on the yellow cake uranium plant. Yes. 2008. Yes. If that would have happened, they would have blowed that plant up. We had intel that there'd have been a dirty bomb go off in Miami, Chicago, New York. We don't know where it didn't happen. In this reality, it didn't happen. But we jumped timelines. Mm -hmm. Literally jumped timelines. The doomsday timeline was going to start then. That would have led us into what they call Armageddon, and they—that's—that's that's their making. Uh, that's what they believe they have to do to bring in uh, Lucifer <laughs> or Lucifer or the type of energy. Let's just say it's an energy that is what uh, these creator gods believe that they got to do for us. They don't, uh, it's, I, it's hard to explain when you're trying to talk about entities that believe they're doing right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what it is, is it is waking us up. It is as a, as a collective consciousness arising of insight to see that the disclosure is coming out and then we can put it in the rock proper place so people don't think we're crazy and i've been doing this for so long that literally uh people either got two opinions of me they got a uh, i'm a conspiracy th theorist nut or in one side of their brain they're thinking he might be right but it's not about me being right. There's so many other great people that are doing this work. I don't have to try to explain each step that led to the deception being broken down. But I, I will say this. I did have a great man tell me years ago that people were machines. And I think I understand a little more about what he's saying. Um, you know what a drone is? It flies in the sky. It's controlled. There, these entities that have this ability to literally do that to a person and drive us like an avatar. <laughs> and the avatar, the movie, the avatar is trying to tell us something. Mm -hmm. It's in the movies. It's in a lot of, a lot of things. That, that w One of the reasons I understand some of this is because what he told me and other people that I have actually met in the physical have told me is that they got to tell us what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And it is once you see that, you start learning their comms the way they talk and they spin spells. And so you can hear it through the media and then you can do your own research while we got chance to use Google for the right reasons. You can start putting it, it's like a web. You can put it together and you can actually see a picture and look back in the past and see how, how much information that we had about the pending disaster at 9-11. It is amazing at all the foreshadowing 
and forewarning in movies and things about how that event was going to go down. That was the mega ritual. Uh, that you talk about that on on the internet, people think you crazy. Exactly. I want to just go back over a few things that you said. That's uh, uh, you know you talked about. Uh, we're going to get to this soul trapped, and you talk about uh, these beings that feed off of collective consciousness. And if you were to uh, just look at the Bible, the book of Genesis, matter of fact, the book of uh, the Jubilees and Enoch and all of those books, they talk about these creator gods. Another way of saying that is these fallen angels. Another uh, name for angel in the Bible is El, which means God, okay? And even when you spell angel, it is with the E-L in English and stuff. And so these were called gods also. And uh, there were these creator gods that did a whole lot of stuff on this planet and other places, and they were this displaced or kicked out from the highest realms of heaven or the courts of God, if you will, because of their disobedience. And you find that translated in uh, Genesis 6 about the sons of God uh, going into the daughters of men and all of this. And as he was saying, you know, uh, just looking from biblical time frame, although we know this was happening way before then also, but looking at, at biblical chronology, you see that all of these different governments began to develop and they were being controlled by these uh, creator gods, if you will, or archons, if you will. Some people, you might even call them even demons, because as we talked about last week, that the Nephilim, uh, which were uh, uh, the, the fallen ones, when they were mixed with the humans, the angels or the gods mixed with humans that became the avatars, when they died, the spirit that came out of them was not like humans. They didn't have a soul like humans. And so uh, it went into the fourth dimension. They became what we call the demons today. And there are those different levels of that. There are the powers, the virtues, the principalities, and the uh, all of those dominions and stuff that Paul speaks of in Ephesians chapter 6. And those are the ones that make up the construct of this interdimensional government that's exerting their influence into the three-dimensional world and controlling this world and for the whole purpose of bringing in the Luciferian energy because they feel that they are right and, and they, they're just so convinced that this is what has to happen that they are creating all of these mass sacrifices as Buddy mentioned 9-11. That was a sacrifice. That was a, that was a human sacrifice a blood sacrifice that took place on that date. It had to happen because they set it up that way. It was not like what we were told. The wars that's happening on and on. We've, we've been in war since we've been a nation, basically. You know, <laughs> I think it's only been about maybe uh, 20, 40 years or so. Uh, don't quote me on that, that we haven't been at war. And then you look at what this nation was found on and you saw how the real history was erased and, uh, and just reinvented and given to us. And they're doing it even before our eyes to this very day, <laughs> like, you know. And so, and, so and, and you see the people that, that founded this great nation, what they believe in was that Luciferian energy. They, they felt that they had to do this. And so we see these constant slaughters and invasions of countries and bombing, and even within this country here, all of that is about human sacrifice. That's the bottom line, you know. It's about sacrifice to these creator gods and these beings. And uh, uh, Buddy talked about soul trap. He's going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute here, but I want to just remind you that and he talked about these beings that feed off of collective consciousness. And that might sound a little bit strange for some of you, but those of you that follow my ministry and stuff, you know we've talked about things like this, is that what makes us so unique as humans is our emotions. Okay, and these emotions that we have give off a, 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 an array of frequencies and they serve as food 
for the archons. They serve as food for those interdimensional beings. And so if they can create uh, this, this, this fear and this anxiety constantly, every time you turn on the news, you know, this, this is happening, and they create all of that, they are feeding, they're feeding, they're feeding. That's how they eat. If they can create mayhem and fear and destruction and all of this uneasiness, because that is not the way of, of, of the human nature. That's not the way. But that was brought in and given to us, and they're being fed. I'll say it another way. In the book of Genesis, you see a serpent talking to the woman at the tree, this reptilian. But by the time you get to Revelation, it's a seven-headed dragon. The thing has grown so big and stuff. And how do you get big? By eating. <laughs> and so then what did God say to the serpent? He says, you're going to crawl on your belly and dust is going to be your food. And what is human made out of? Dust. So, and what Buddy is saying, don't become devil's food. Don't live in the dust realm, in that lower realm, in that, in that, in that place of fear and uh, addictions and all of this stuff. You become devil's food. You are feeding that whole uh, uh, you know, negative consciousness, that whole system with that. And, we're, and that's why Isaiah said, shake yourself from the dust, arise and shake yourself from the carnality and from the ego and all of that stuff that has to do with this so that you won't become devil's food. Whew. So it, that's, that's like what you were saying, right, buddy? <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like uh, something out of a, a science fiction movie. It does. <laughs> but as this disclosure comes forth, more and more of it, we're going to learn these words and these terminologies Louche is 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 what they actually call it. Once they Loosh. once they they use that mania of people in these situations, as uh, yeah, that's that's what it is. But now, just as much as they're bad guys, they're good guys. Yes, they're white heads. They're people that actually have been schooled and trained in this understanding of uh, spiritual warfare, to say the least. They know mechanical warfare, high technology warfare. They're, they're the good guys inside of DARPA. They're the good, good guys inside of the CIA, the NSA. They're, they're the ones that's gonna reopen the internet. That's why we, we don't even have freedom of speech in America anymore. You cannot say Luminati in a video. That That is being picked up by an AI bot. And actually, as soon as it, it says it, if you say those certain words, and we done said them here, so if this was to be like translated and put on the internet, uh, it'd be shut down. Now, there is no reason to shut down the word of truth. Absolutely, unless it's an evil thing. So we're dealing with a technology that's designed to hold us down. It's designed not to tell us the truth. It's designed to tell us a lie, but we're using it for good and we're using it to help wake up people. And so see the bad guys, the Luciferians, the, the ones that really understand the game, they know at their core being that they're doing right. They were, they were just like you and I, they are given a mission to actually be as evil as they can. And they're playing a game. I'm not saying love them, but I'm saying this, recognize they're playing a game. And then you can possibly understand they are beatable. We can beat them at their own game. And then we can modify the game with our thinking. Yes, Once yes. we modify our body, that's the corruption is what they've done to this physical form. Now, everybody wants to believe that God made this physical clay body. Well, they're the ones that corrupted the DNA. They're the ones that literally made slave races for thousands of years. And we're the, we're the remnants of, of that slave mentality race. And it's not a white thing or a black thing. It's a worldwide thing. Mm -hmm. We're all slaves. We're all slaves to, to a lie, and it's got to stop. It's got to actually stop within us first, and then we can see the light of truth, and then we can actually start seeing the disclosure for what it is and how the cellular loops in our lives, and then the ones in the world that we can see how it is a big loop. And 
when you got the knowledge and the power, you can fool, you can fool people. And it, just, it's, it's just, it's just, um, let's talk about the soul trap. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, get a little aggravated with me when I go to try to talk about it because there's other people that really understand it and can say a lot better eloquent words about how and why and get down to the, the gist of it. But I'm going to give you the Mississippi word of it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you uh, what I understand in my being. And uh, the type of soul trap is the fact that we come through a woman birth canal with no memory. We're right back to scratch one. And we have to start all over this journey of understanding who we are to get back to the awakened I am Christ consciousness. And sometimes it doesn't happen. And it's set up that way, not to allow us to know who we are. But once the game is shown, then we can start realizing how big of a trap death is, the cycle of life and death itself, and what it means to understand that if we're in a matrix, in a simulated reality, bits and ones and zeros, and the background noise in this is, is a, a computer system running. And it's almost a proven fact, but don't take my word for it. You got to do your own understanding and understanding for that. But it's holographic in nature. And where we go to the light, they want us to go in as ignorant as we can be. So we accept seeing our mother, our father, our grandfather, and actually tell us that they're taking us to the light, through the light, and we're going to be just fine. Well, they created that matrix also. That's how evil these people are. Now, I want to call them people, but, you know, you understand. It's to actually trap us to the point that they give us a whole nother mission, tell us to come right back through the birth canal, and that, that we got to still keep learning, still keep learning. This is stoppable. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you that great people have, have spoke this, and it's just so hard to get the word out. But we are the light. We are the power of the resurrected power of the light. So when I see a light, the only real way out is to die. But when I pass over and I see a light, I'm going to turn away from it and say, I am the light. <laughs> Your light must be artificial. It must be a trap. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But there's a lot of great people that are trying to get this message out about who we are and how powerful it is to walk in the light of the I am and break this cycle. And if enough of us stand up, it can be done. Amen. That's so true. You know, uh, Yeshua mentioned that he addressed that same issue. And a lot of people don't realize it. it is right throughout the scripture. You find that, first of all, the prophet Ezekiel is told to go down to the potter's house and to watch him work this work on a wheel, the karmic wheel, this cycle of death and rebirth, the Ouroboros, you know, coming back and forth. So you get to the New Testament. And they're asking Yeshua, was he a part of that system? Are you John the Baptist? Are you Elijah? Are you one of the pieces? No, no, I'm not. I've, I've never been and came back before in that sense, right? Because <laughs> I'm not a part of that system. I'm here to break that system, matter of fact. And so in John chapter 10, it gets on, it's the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's very prophetic because it's the time frame that we're moving into now where the, 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 uh, the, the cosmic... Uh, Sukkot or, uh, of tabernacles is taking place, which represent the realization of the I am God in this temple here. Okay, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. And so it's during the Feast of Tabernacle. And, and the disciples see this blind man and they says, Master, who sinned that he was born blind? Did his parents sin or did he sin as in another life that he was born blind? And Yeshua stopped that. He says, he says, no, this was for the glory of God. 
basically what he was saying was that it's not about the karmic cycle. I come to break that. You know, I come so that you can be born again from above and won't have to go through this cycle. He says, uh, and so he says, it's not about that, but this is for the glory of God. Then he told the man to go and to wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. And when he came back, after he washed, he came back seeing. And so now his eyes was open. His karmic cycle was broken. He didn't have to be reincarnated anymore. And Yeshua uh, did that to show that he came to break that cycle. But you must be willing to wash your eyes out from what they have put before you. You must be willing to get rid of all the false images and imaginations and the things that were uh, downloaded into our DNA from this whole system that you talked about. And so the man went rejoicing and the people couldn't believe, you know, and matter of fact, they even kicked him out of the synagogue. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I've been kicked out of quite a few churches yeah. myself. <laughs> when, you tell, when you tell someone you've always been and you always will be, mm -hmm. they can't handle it. And um, you're the you're the very same thing that I am. And um, a lot of people, they 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 think that we have a beginning, and what we do in that reincarnated cycle. This time I happen to be white, and I happen to be named Buddy Huggins. That ain't who I am. Uh, my personality, my story, means absolutely nothing in an etern in the eternity of who I am. I'm a light being known as the I am. And I see that in every man, every person, no matter where they are in their understanding or understanding, it doesn't have anything to do with their real reality. Mm -hmm. There are the very essence of the Christ being that has to experience what we're going through. And people want to say, well, how did that, how could that possibly be true? Well, if your source being of all things and you want to really understand what physicality is, you can't do it no other better way than to have a part of yourself decide to take a journey into the unknown. Now, they call it the Kaya Yuga, the actual cycles of what we're saying are huge huge cosmic cycles and for see so if you know everything and have the power of, of of a creator god that gets born after a few ten hundred billion years <laughs> and then you want a little drama in it um, alan watts is great at this alan watts lived uh in the 40s 50s and 60s and, and he he uh was a lecturer and if you've never heard of him you got to listen because he, he has helped many people understand what we're saying when we talk in terms of who we are. And in that, in that not knowing, when somewhere, someone finds something that doesn't make any sense, Alan Watts and other people that are forerunners, Watchman Nee, there's some, I mean, the list is small. But there's some great forerunners that have tried to explain the cosmic game and the uh, cosmic illusion of who we are. And, and wake up. You are the I am. You are the embodiment of Christ in this physical reincarnation of now, in this time continuum. And get this, we're even in alternate lives at the same time. Yes, and, yes. and that's that's a concept that is, is really new to the thinkers and the lookers of truth. But I, I can't say I explain, I can explain it or understand it, but it's, it's in the math of the numbers of the understanding of quantum physics. And it's down into the very matrix itself. We have to be doing all of that experiencing because we are the one. There seems to be a lot of people here on planet Earth, but it ain't but one of us. And that's what you know the teaching of Alan Watts shows and talks about. 
they call it Tao, Taoism. Taoism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a piece of truth. It's not the whole truth. Mm -hmm. People say I'm a Buddhist. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm I, the word Buddha just means on an awakening path, and I'm not Jesus, but I am Christ, <laughs> consciousness. Right. I am awakening to my identity out of the illusion of a matrix that would tell me I'm Buddy Huggins in a physical body this time. And that's all it is. I take that either to heaven or hell, believing on how I believe I am. And so we think people are lost, but nobody's ever been lost. And it's easy to, it's easy once, once we start realizing who we are, how manipulated the game is because when we see someone if we're not seeing ourselves within them being a fragment of of all that ever is and all that ever was then we're deceived and we're deceiving ourselves because that's what's going to stop the wars that's what's going to stop the hatred is to understand we're only hurting ourselves mm -hmm. How I can't solve any problems in this world the way they've got things designed right now, but I tell you the key to it is the disclosure coming forth mm -hmm. that's going to rock the collective consciousness out of the sloop stupor or it says we were put under a strong delusion in the word of God, and that is the facts. Once we, as a collective Christ body, arise they fear that the most. That's why they've got all the control over our, our social media life. And that's why anybody that comes forth that has a really true word of God, they get no audience. Mm -hmm. And you, Billy Graham gets a huge audience. You know, the, the, there's certain people, I don't want to name all names, but Joe Osteen, <laughs> bless his heart. I wish he'd wake up and tell the truth <laughs> just one time. <laughs> you know what happened? He'd lose his church. He would lose his church, and it's happened to other people too. But um, the good news is that there are some good guys yeah, that yeah. are actually starting to free up the consciousness and stop the loose machine from feeding them. And once they get starved, then they start showing their, their hand. And then you can see the hidden hand. They call it the hidden hand. You seen pictures yeah. where these people are doing this. <laughs> that, that didn't happen because they told them it'd make a good picture. It happened because they're in a brotherhood. That's right. And, he, and That's these right. people that are in these brotherhoods all over the earth, uh, everyone has their secret societies and they don't know nothing. They ain't got a clue what's at the top. They just are, are puppets to a system that is using them and those people get ahead i'm gonna be honest with you they play the game of uh masons and all this just it's so many other things shriner people say well the shriners buddy it can't be none none of them they good people they're good people but they're deceived and they're being used in the communities instead of doing educating of the light they're actually just keep them playing a game like a roller coaster that's all it's see that's all it, if we don't snap out of it then we're all we are is destined to keep riding on the roller coaster um who was that comedian bill hicks that man he awoke in his being and he was a comedian and he was telling people who we are and what was going on and nobody seemed to understand but as a comedian he was fabulous and and um, oh there's so many other there's a couple other comedians george carlin george carlin clicked in his being and he started telling people he said these people don't care about us michael jackson even said they don't care about us he caught on to it and really seen the game and they flipped a strip on him and made him look like he was a pedophile mm -hmm. My, uh, michael jackson was as close to a a Christ conscious being as you'll ever see on planet earth that had immense power of love and would not hurt, a, hurt anything, but they can, when you control the media, you can control the narrative and they can take anybody down. They, 
there might be somebody they can't take down that that's on the scene right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm not I'm not holding out for you know any any whirlwind news coming you know except listen to the comms and listen to how information is being told about follow the money and when we get those tidbits then we can start we have already started seeing people get arrested that they were saying was a conspiracy theory and um, that as the one that killed himself by hanging himself off of a Epstein. Epstein killed himself. That's a that's a sacrifice ritual. And there's been a lot of other people hung himself. Robin Williams. I, I did never understand how Robin Williams could hang himself with a belt from a from a door hinge. It didn't make no sense then. It don't make no sense now. But there's certain things that once you in the you're in that flock of of evil, there's sacrifices that have to be made and he was one of them and if you go looking there's there's been many of them that that get taken out in, in mysterious ways but um i'm not saying epstein is is dead i'm believing from some of the factual information is he's in a safe place and he's talking like crazy <laughs> i hope so <laughs> i hope he is and um at the, so. well, at the same time get this they've got all the information Mm -hmm. This system was set up to rob us of our identity through information so they could build a simulation reality where we exist and cohabitate. And they could actually literally start with the 5G tracking us with light bulbs inside our house. Mm -hmm. In other words, they want to know who, where we are, when we are, who we're talking to, because they fear us that much. And if we stop talking and we we stop trying to help one another, then they win. Exactly. Amen. That that's so true. You know, if we stop talking, you know, oftentimes I, I I'm on Facebook and I don't really use my real name there. Uh, or I didn't do that for a long time. Every once in a while, I put my name there. But you know, uh, I get people upset because. I like to expose things because I realize that there's power in knowledge. There's power in awareness and that we who have come to the light, you know, we have a responsibility to awaken others. And one of the ways that we do that is by speaking truth. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And as you said, they don't want the truth out there. They want to shut it down because they want to continue to create their own narrative and reinvent history as they go right along until there is nothing else but their system that new age, not new age, but new world system that they want to bring in, which is just a fake. I mean, which is just a, a counterfeit for what the scripture calls the kingdom of God, for what uh, the Hindus and the Buddhists call the golden age, you know? And so they want to bring in the counterfeit for that. And theirs is totally by control, controlling us and the 5G technology and all of that that is happening. But thank God that, as you said, that there are people that are waking up. There are people that are aware. There are people that are listening and that are waking others up. And I was thinking today, like your last message you brought us uh, back in January was uh, awake, you know, how you became awoke rather. And I was thinking that, you know, a lot of people, they wake up, but they never get up. They wake up, but they never get up. And they just lie there in bed, just awake, well, I'm awake, you know. And so, and I think that now that what Spirit is doing, he's saying, get up, get up and start to do something with what you have, with what you know, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit or a lot or so, but we are all that light. And as we speak the truth, that light becomes bigger and that system has to crumble. And you, you, you made a point earlier, you said that they think that they're gonna win. They think that they're gonna win in spite of this book. It tells you what's gonna happen in the end, but they are so delusional, they're so arrogant, that they think that they're going to win. That's why the scripture says, uh, I believe in Psalms, or was it maybe two, it says this, that why do the heathens rage? Why do they imagine a vain thing? Why do they want to fight against the Lord, Yahweh, and his Christ? 
that's in the Bible. And that and, and the New Testament tells the same thing you find in Revelation 12 about them making war with the Lord and his Christ, you know, and we are that Christ. We're those that are awakened and there is a real warfare going on. There is a psychological warfare that is going on daily uh, uh, and competing to control your mind through media, social media and everything. And as we talked about earlier, all the subtle things through microwave technology and uh, 5G and all of the other stuff that is out there. Uh, that that's happening and that warfare is is and it, it would appear almost that they're winning because you look at the world you look at this nation how divided it's become and how hateful people have become but the scripture says that when sin abound the grace of god will much more abound so the light that's within us the light that we are and that we realize that we are is going to overcome all of that darkness and it's happening yep it, it's it definitely is happening it seems like uh we're we're on on par for disclosure mm -hmm. and i know I, I know i've done said that a lot and i know a lot of people wonder what i'm talking about but um a disclosure can be soft mm -hmm. and they want it to be soft and take another hundred years so <laughs> there's arbitrators that are actually debating on on how much to release and when to release it, but at at a certain level, when the disclosure clicks in, then we will actually see mass arrest. Now, mass arrests have already happened, or let's say re resonations of of you know the way the government system is. There's uh, most of those people they don't resign; they stay in power for a long time. Well, either they're they're there's a huge list of people that have resigned, mm -hmm. good positions, but the reason they resigned is because they're not doing the work of the light, they're doing the dark. And when, when they use <clears throat> their technology to, <sighs> literally they've been actually doing uh, this type of, with rotary dial phones, where they were listening to conversations with the AI technology back in the fifties. And it's, it's, it just didn't start a few years ago with cell phones. Right. It's been happening for a long time. But now that the white hats have the formulas and actually a little bit getting on par with the right AI, there's two kinds of AIs. There's one AI from the creator gods. That's, that's is super, super, powerful but there's even a greater ai of the light that's being webbed through time and space mm -hmm. to actually put the image together where we can actually as a being see that it's happening now yes yes it always seems like it's something to come in the future but if you can pay attention to the cons and i keep saying the word cons because i want to i want to explain it Mm -hmm. They talk in code, so the ones that are the white hats have to talk in code. Mm -hmm. But they're using the technology against them. These people are evil. Now, I'm talking about the minions. I'm talking about the ones you see on TV that are doing the work of the creator gods as servants and, and slaves to them. They're, they're under the spell that they've got to make billions of dollars to be happy. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're more than welcome to get get them the richest as long as they keep perpetrating the lie but when they flipped a strip with fisa it got flipped right back on them so now we have all their communications and the evidence is coming out about what they've done the way they've done it all the way back to the the, the mass mind control of what they did to kennedy in broad daylight shot him Shot it. They say it was one shooter. It was three shooters. Mm -hmm. Three. I don't. I don't want to even try to say I know how that was went down. But I'm telling you, that was a setup for 9/11, even as far back as Kennedy's assassination. Mm -hmm. So now that uh, we got this information, that's being data collected on them. They're having to talk with uh, crayons for written information. <laughs> And as memes and to get their message out across to the world to their minions to tell them what the next mission is 
because we know their comms. We know their comms, and now we're starting to understand who the white hats are and how powerful they are. And I don't, I'm not going to say they're not being led by Archangel Michael. I, I fully intend to hear in disclosure who my Archangel Michael is in this physical incarnation uh, quicker than we hear of any kind of made up phony mess about an antichrist that is a clone of a clone. Mm -hmm. You know, when you clone something, it gets dumber and dumber. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, buddy, they don't clone people. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of evidence is coming, coming to pass and a lot of people are putting their life on the line talking about it. And uh, the music industry, the rap industry and uh, other places where you, you wouldn't think that, that they're getting fed up with Luciferian uh, mentality over their lives. So there's, there is, there is just as good whistleblower as anybody else. Let me say this about Julian Assange. Julian Assange, when history comes out and not rewritten to make him a terrorist, he's going to be a journalist and he's going to be a freedom mm -hmm. person. He's going to be somebody that's going to actually will be happy to understand how he got what he got. Self Rich was the DNC person that got the files that actually opened up uh, Wiener's email information that gave them a lot of the cons about how they were doing certain words and certain manipulations to control that deep part of it, human trafficking. There's so many words you can't say nowadays, pedophilia. Mm -hmm. Julian Assange was made a scapegoat for it, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you something. The evidence is going to come out that he did right. He was a journalist. He had the ability to tell us through Self Rich, but Self Rich was taken out, was murdered in broad daylight and said it was a robbery and it wasn't a robbery. So who had to be in control of the police? Uh -huh. see, the, see, the police are able to be bought and paid for. And so at, at certain levels, when you hear something on the news, you just don't know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. You don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. And there's some court cases out right now that can blow the whistle on a lot of corruption that, that people just, they ain't got the heart or the power to talk about. Mm -hmm. and because they've cut us down so bad. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, there was a time when my channel was growing so fast. I was, I was getting 35,000 views a day and the word was getting out because I had collaborated with some pretty good um, Christ conscious beings that were giving me the right to reproduce their work. And all of it got stripped away. This is the third purge of YouTube. And the first purge, I lost 200 videos. were just taken off the internet mm -hmm. and threatened to throw my channel down then. And then, the second purge, and then now the third purge. And it's all across, not just this country, but it's all across the world. Mm -hmm. And they're coming after anybody that's telling the truth. And they're using the reason to come after our channels is they call it duplication. It's collaboration. Mm -hmm. And they, when you got light beings telling the truth, they, they'll let a channel that has absolutely nonsensical information Mm -hmm. Get a million subscribers, two million subscribers. Pootie Pie. If you don't know who Pootie Pie is, <laughs> he's one of the biggest YouTubers out there. And, yeah. And Pootie Pie even got in trouble for trying to tell some truth. And, and Pootie Pie had to clean his act up. Now he's back doing video games. He wants that two million dollars a month coming in. Yeah. If we had a level person like that start telling the truth. It would be amazing. David Icke is is one of the first persons that was slammed the hardest on 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 YouTube. He lost not just one channel. He put another channel back up, lost that channel. And now he has a channel up, but he has to be so careful about what he says and how he does mm -hmm. that it it just is hard to 
to reach an audience with the truth. And anybody that can make the, the leap over into the side of a great audience and can be a, a, a sure enough whistleblower gathering type thing, they get co opted mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to name no names in the truther communities, but um, anybody can be co-opted. If you see me get co-opted, you know there's a problem because I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of, of who they are because I know who they are. I know the game they're playing. They're having to play it, and that's okay. It's When, when it all comes out, they're going to be – in a funny way, they're going to be as just as a powerful light as what we are, as the dark is to us. It's the opposite as what we are to them and us. Now, there ain't nobody saying that we ever played a dark role in some some other incarnation of, of some kind of reality. Who can say? Mm-hmm. Who can really understand how this game's been played out over the eons of time? And what could come what could come out of this test? This is like a test. And um, they say this universe that in this matrix is special. And you mentioned that our emotions are something that, that these entities might be giving us some information to help us snap out of this. Mm-hmm. Because if it doesn't snap out, we go into the singularity of mechanical singularity. Right computer singularity, informational data singularity. And that's what Kurzweil talks about in in his writings and um, other people that are behind the engineering of of the data. It's all about the data. And, um, but I'm telling you, there's another singularity and it's consciousness. Yes. And we're headed to that singularity. There's two harvests. There's a harvest of the ones that go ahead and, and, and chip out and become nanobots because we're already being filtrated with uh, nanoparticles and nanobots in our food and in our air anyway. And so let me say this why I said that. Our intel shows us that as long back as 30 days ago, they stopped the chemtrails. The white hats took over the chemtrailing systems. In other words, all those pilots that didn't know what they were doing are out of a job. Mm-hmm. And the sky is cleaning up all across the country. Y'all, you've got groups of people from everywhere. Y'all start monitoring the skies, start looking at the cloud textures, start looking at um, if you see a contrail versus a chemtrail, notice that it's way less, if not completely stopped. I'm not going to say it's completely stopped. But the intel says if you see something right now, it's spraying the opposite of negative. It's spraying good. It's it's incredible to think that they can control the skies and tic-tac the skies and normal people can't even. I stood outside Walmart one day and just asked people to look up as they come out. And I'm telling you, nobody can even see it. They couldn't even see the fact that it was... It was laced, you know, yeah. it was tic tac toed all across the sky. Mm-hmm. And I stood there for an hour talking to people. And it's just, it's insane. Now we can say that the sky is being taken over by the white hats and that is changed. If that's true, let's, as a group of people, let's observe it, let's talk about it and post about it. And, um, let other people understand. You'll never get the deadheads. I call them deadheads. Is that a nice word or not? I call them deadheads. Yeah, you'll, you'll never get the deadheads to really see what we see. But then again, I can't see what you see, and you can't see what I see. Who's Which one of us is deadhead? It's, 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 the fact is, as long as we trust in what we are as Christ consciousness, we're awakening out of our death. I was dead when I attempted those suicides, 19 and a half, 28, and then um, 42. That was that was a dead person. Mm-hmm. I consider myself having life now and understanding that I've always been and I always will be. Yes. Once yes. you get that knowledge within your DNA and your structure and you start working on your body and rewiring it, look, 
let me say this. If you were given one car when you was like 14 years old and they told you that was the only car you was ever going to have, you'll never have another car. You've got to take care of that car. Everybody would take care of that car. That oil would get changed. Those tires would get rotated and everybody would take care of that car. But you can look at uh, other countries like Cuba and see it. They're taking care of their, their 50 model cars. How many people are actually really focusing on the tabernacle of God, the temple that was built, you know, within our being and actually really watching their blood pressure, really watching their diet, really watching what they put in their body and do they exercise? And that's my little gimmick for right now is that, you know, I'm, I'd like to show people that that sedentary type thing is, is a tool to keep us dumbed down. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just want to touch on a couple of things that you mentioned here. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that you mentioned was clones. A lot of people don't realize that we have the technology. We've had it for a long time. They've been using it. And a lot of the people that you see on TV, and especially in public office, uh, you're seeing clones. You're not really seeing the real person. And I demonstrated that uh, some years ago. I was actually in Minnesota doing a conference there, Faith Tabernacle. Some of the people will be online that can verify this, I believe. And so if you are, I want you to raise your hand if you were in that meeting. This was several years ago. And I was up preaching and I went into the prophetic and I began to see George Bush Sr. And I, and I, and I had many times said that he was a clone and stuff like that, that what we were seeing. And I demonstrated and I says, as a sign... I says, I, I don't remember the exact wordings of it, but it's on the website. And I says, I command that clone to malfunction. <laughs> I, say, I spoke it. I says, I command that clone to malfunction. I said, you're going to see it's going to be on the, uh, it's going to be in the news and everything like that. And, uh, and I said, uh, something about, I said something about his neck. And I says, I command it to malfunction and you will see that it's a clone. And then uh, shortly after he fell and he broke his neck you know, broke a bone in his neck. And so, and I spoke again that the, that the clone would malfunction. I wrote about it and, and, and told what was going to happen. And so all of that is online. And, and it came out in the German newspaper before, this was like several years before he died. It, his obituary was written in the German newspaper that he had already passed away. Then they retracted it. And I posted it on the internet because I was able to get it before they retracted and took it off the internet. And so, uh, but that was a sign that, that, you know, that, that I gave the people that that was a clone that you were looking at. And so, and they have that technology and the queen and all of these people, uh, they have the type of technology, uh, and this is going to be a little bit far out, but what we've been talking about far out stuff. You know, like when you go through an airport and uh, you go through security and, you know, and you, and this thing, you know, uh, it, 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 it detects metal detectors, stuff like that. They have the technology that is similar to a portal like that, where the person that you see on TV, they, uh, they, you know, in making speeches and stuff, they walk through this thing and all at once they are young they're youthful. You would not even recognize them. And they go out and do whatever they want to do. They're at the beaches or whatever like that. And when they have to come back in to face the public, they go through this thing again. And there they are looking with their tired faces and everything like that. You know, that, that technology uh, exists and it's been around for a while. And, uh, and so it, it's very interesting. And you also talked about we are multidimensional beings, that there are other worlds. Even the scripture says in Hebrews that says that, that he created the world, you know, he, 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 by his words. He created the worlds by his word. And so we do have all of these different levels or dimensions of, uh, of existence and universes that are parallel to each other and uh, side by side and all of that. And you are existing in those because, as you said, there's only one. You know, there's only the one, but this one has been fragmented into various like uh, spaces and pieces and you're doing whatever it is that you're doing in those alternate realities and you're here in this reality. And But the ultimate goal is to be made whole. That's why Yeshua came preaching and he would ask the people, do you want to be made whole? He came so that he could put together all the fragments of our being, not just in this three-dimensional construct, but also in other realities that's existing. 
and that's when that's when that's the that's the that's the spiritual that's the Christ conscious singularity that you are talking about when we become one when we come into complete realization uh, as he said in John chapter 17 make them one as we are one father you know <laughs> reveal that glory to them and when we become one in that instance and fully knowing that we are the I am that I am that consciousness living in the earth and that every part of us that is scattered throughout the multiverse will become one and we take all of that power that's been fragmented and we become this super being that we really always were and it's very you know it's, it's just very powerful when we understand that and when we know that that is the plan you know uh, for what we call salvation even the word salvation it means to be made whole to be put back to peace again you know they gave us the nursery rhyme humpty dumpty sat on the wall humpty dumpty had a great fall all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But there's one that can, you know. <laughs> and so there is, there's the king of kings that is putting back this image, his, the original image of Genesis chapter 1, where he says, let us create man in our image in that hyper-dimensional reality, that fifth-dimensional reality before the Lord in the physical form. And so and that, that image is going to come back together. That image is going to manifest in this world and in every world and is going to totally absorb and destroy, if you will, the darkness in everything that is false. You mentioned about AI technology. And, and I like to, I, I like to, you know, to, to just show you that, you know, show people that all of this is in here. It is there. It is there. They're, they're in the book of Joshua. After they came out of the wilderness and stuff, one of the battles that they fought in, Gen in Joshua chapter 7 was the battle of AI. See, we have this book of codes here. When we learned how to read it, all of it is here. And so they had this battle of AI. And, and as Buddy was telling us, there's two types of AI. There is there's the negative uh, artificial intelligence that's controlled by the Luciferians and those that are in the fourth dimensional world and the Archons and all of these people. They're bringing that technology in. But there's a higher, greater form of artificial intelligence from the Christ, you know, from that, from that side, the light. And, and, and they're, they're mentioned here. So in Joshua chapter 7, they had to uh, fight this battle of Ai. The first time they were defeated. They were defeated by artificial intelligence because they did not rely upon God. They looked to their own abilities, their own technology, their own understanding. And that was the first battle, I believe, that they lost after they had come out of the wilderness. And it was the battle of AI, pronounced I. Okay, you remember in Luciferian stuff, you know, the I, okay. And so now, and so you go to chapter eight and you will find that, okay, they repented. They says, okay, okay, we realize that there is a, there is a higher form. There's a higher technology here. And so God gave them a plan how to defeat AI. And they ambushed AI and they defeated it. And God told uh, Joshua, and it says, And the Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the spear that's within your hand toward AI, toward artificial intelligence. This is Joshua chapter 8, verse 18 in this ancient book. And Joshua stretched out the spear as he had in his hand toward that city, toward that whole construct, that, that technology, and it came apart. And you will find, I'm not going to go all over all this because it's so exciting, you will find that Yahweh came down in ships and, and he manipulated the weather and caused hailstorms to fall and destroy AI. <laughs> You know, it's right there in your Bible. This is science fiction here. And so what the, the, prop, the prophetic word is, yes, you're in this time where there's going to be these battles and all of this crazy stuff, sci-fi stuff that you see on TV. It's becoming your reality. It's going to become right. It's happening all around you and stuff, you know. And so it is going to appear as though humans will have been overcome by the machines, by the artificial intelligence. But there's something that's going to rise up. There's the Yeshua company. There's the Christ that's going to rise up. And there's going to be a command given. And that spear, which is the word of God, is going to be directed toward that whole system and it's going to bring it down. It's going to destroy that system and you'll find that the scripture uh, says that that no, no, and, and just, just think about this. You you have these, these Hebrew people and you have the people of Ai. How did the stones know to crush the evil ones? 
all the good. And but those those giant hailstones, it crushed AI and totally wiped them out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so exciting that you are in an exciting time that in spite of all of these negative things happening that we've been talking about, that there is a plan and that that whole system is, go is going to be destroyed. The Bible calls it in Revelation, the uh, 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 that uh, Babylon will be destroyed. Babylon is going to fall. That whole system that is there, that is totally anti-human and totally anti-Christ, it will be destroyed. We win because the scripture says it and because we know it on the inside and they have tried to destroy humanity for thousands of years and they cannot do it. They can't do it. Why do they want to destroy humanity? Because we are the image and likeness of the most high God. And that system is totally anti-God, although it uses the name of God and uses religion and politics and all of these other things, you know, to deceive and stuff. But it's totally anti uh, everything that God is. It is anti-Christ. And but they will not be able to because one scripture says this, that all of creation is groaning and travailing in pain, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So all of creation is waiting for us to wake up and not only to wake up, but to get up and to use the authority and the power that you have been given. That's right here. The power of life and death is in your tongue to speak it forth and to uh, and to bring decrees. Uh, some of you that, that have followed our ministry, you know, back in the, what, 2008, 2000, between 2008, 2013 or so, when CERN, when they was ramping up CERN, the large hydrogen collider there at CERN and stuff like that and opening up these gateways allowing these fourth dimensional beings in and stuff like that and I posted it on the internet and I, I spoke into CERN the large hydrogen collider and command a virus to corrupt the system and I posted it on the internet and got other people to agree with me and it happened not one time, but two, but at least two to three times in just showing the authority that we have, you know, that, that, that Yahweh has given us and that we must wake up, we must get up, we must be aware. You've heard a lot of things tonight about various news stories. Some of you are wondering, like, what is that? What is that about? You know, that's because, you know, you're not aware of the news. I'm not saying you should sit and watch the news all the time, but the Bible tells us to watch. It tells us to be aware of what's going on. And uh, and this is going to help you to know how to pray, not to just watch just the stuff, you know, because it can become very depressing and stuff, but to watch it uh, with the eyes of the spirit and see what they are, what's going on and hear it with the ears of the spirit. Listen to what they are not saying. As I oftentimes say, listen to the words that's, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, that, that's been that's between the words, <laughs> you know, the words underneath the words, and you'll hear the spirit taught me that many years ago and stuff, and uh, and you will hear a lot of things that they are not really even uh, telling you, and but you will know it, and you will know how to pray about it, you will know how to uh, launch decrees against it, and to uh, bring an end to it because that's our mission here. Uh, but you want to share? We don't want to hold you up too long because we know that. Uh, um, you know, uh, praise God and uh, some things, but I share something else. And then after that, we're going to open it up for just a few minutes for questions. And we're going to go into breakout rooms if you can stay. And you're going to be in one of the breakout rooms with some, some of the people and, you know, and share more. And there's going to be about four or five breakout rooms and uh, with small groups of people for about 15 minutes. But just closing, uh, what would you, what else would you like to share with us? Just um, well, we said quite a bit, and uh, the, the only thing that a person can do is to research while well, we've got the ability to research, because they could even pull the plug on, on the internet. And it, as this thing, you said Babylon was coming down, that, that, that system of government, that system of, of um, the money system, the Babylonian phony money system. Let's be real. The money's not backed up by nothing. It could be gone overnight, and then you got you know anarchy worse than what we got now, because everybody believes that you got to have the money. It's it's not about the money. It's about the knowledge of who we are. Mm -hmm. So enough. I don't want to go off into any other tangents, but um, let's just 
let's just know that the information is there. It's uh, I've got uh, Buddy Huggins uh, blogspot.com or search my name Buddy Huggins. If you find my blog page, a lot of things that I post, I'm not 100% on, but I post it for a reason because the spirit says this and this and this. And then I, I question things later. And that, But I actually see a thread through everything, even though I don't, I may not uh, cater to everything that I post. And people say, well, why do you post something you don't really understand? Like I said, there's a thread of truth in it. And why, why eliminate that one thing? Like say the clones, the mm -hmm. cloning. I've been in my knowing about that cloning stuff for a very long thing, long, long time ago. And the machines, the people that are machines, that that blew my mind when I heard that. And then when I really understood cloning, don't have to take our word for it. You look it up and understand and understand and ask for the, the uh, revelation to come the way you need it to come to understand it the way you need to hear. It. You'll hear, and I say this. Let's just end it on this. If there's anything we said tonight that you don't understand, I speak, and I'm sure John will agree with me, that you will hear from two or three saying the same thing in the next 30 days, but these two or three are going to be somebody that you you don't know me, and but the persons that's going to speak this in the next 30 days of some topic that we spoke tonight is going to resonate down to your atoms. Hey, down to hey. your DNA, and you're going to know it as a God truth. Mm. And that's mm. going to happen for the ones that have questions about some of the things we said tonight. We're not trying to fool nobody. We're not trying to make a, uh, it sound like we know what we're talking about. We're seekers, and I'm a seeker, and John is a seeker. And some of this stuff is so far out there. I'll leave it like this. If you think this is the height of technology <laughs> society, it ain't even close. There's been societies before this society that would put everything to shame, but it was destroyed. And the society before that that grew and, and got to a technical level, it was destroyed. As far as I know, the world's been destroyed two times by thermonuclear war, one time by a cataclysm like a polar shift. And some people say it's happened five times. I don't know that. All I'm saying is I know of three. But um, that's a whole nother show for another day. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, buddy. Wow, that's good. Um, uh, if anyone have a question, we want you just to raise your hand. And uh, we're going to just take a few questions now. And then we're going to go into breakout rooms. And, and then we're going to come back and uh, in case someone else have other questions uh, for buddy. The purpose of the breakout rooms is to, is to give you a chance to talk and to uh, fellowship and to express yourself and so but if anyone has a question about anything that was said I want you to okay I see Dr. Bijan hand is up okay uh, let's see you're unmuted yeah buddy in the very beginning you talked about the creator gods being stronger than the archangels can you elaborate on that a little bit yeah, that's kind of tough, but um, the type of um, the type of ability that they have is equal, if not greater, because of the role they're playing as the dark. And so, Archangel Archangel Michael, if he was given the role to be dark, just imagine how dark he could be. So we're dealing with some pretty powerful creator gods. And in a way, with you, you doing the dark part of it, it's 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 more powerful than the light until the people understand it and take the power back. And then they have no power because they're feeding off of loose. They're feeding off of the collective mass consciousness of fear and anxiety. And then the soul trap part of it keeps us so ignorant that they keep a harvest constantly. Mm -hmm. And I said there were two harvests, and uh, that 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 is true. There, there's going to be people go the way of the singularity, and then there's going to be people who actually wake up to the singularity of the light. That might mean that the world splits into two. In other words, the robot world takes off in one direction, and the kingdom of God takes off in another world. In other words, out of one earth comes 
to us. And we will not even care about what goes on over there. It don't have anything to do. And that's probably already happened. And just to add to that about, you know, the, the two harvests, Yeshua talked about the two harvests, you know, and uh, Matthew 24, he spoke about, the, spoke about the harvest of the wheat and the harvest of the tares. And so uh, those two harvests will take place. And uh, just to further explain what uh, Buddy was, was mentioning about these uh, 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 creator guards uh, stronger than the arch archangels and stuff, you know, this, 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 this space that we're in, in space, uh, happens to be very negative, and I don't mean to sound negative, but that's why on this planet, it seems like if you're doing evil, you prosper. If you're hurting people, if you're lying, if you're cheating, oh my God, you get a pass, you know, and you're trying to do good. Even David talked about that over 3,000 years ago. God, why is this? These people are evil and they're doing wrong and stuff, and look what's happening to them. I'm, I'm trying to live right. It's because of the, the energy that's around this space and what you're going to what we're going to find out and stuff is that that the planet here is kind of like a prison planet, actually. And so uh, and I won't, maybe in the future we'll get into that. And uh, the scripture even speaks of it. You find that in, 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 in the 12 gates of Nehemiah, there's one gate that's called the prison gate. And in the, 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 the hidden truth is what happens in that prison gate. And one day we'll talk about that. But, but this planet here, is, is kind of designed that way. And uh, that's why you see on earth as above, you see even in this country here, you know, the prison system. But it's not only here, it's all over the world, but it just happened to be more here in this nation. And so it's because of, of, of the, uh, how can I say, it's because of the overlords, the, the archons and those beings that operate through humans and stuff, it, it, it is designed as a prison place, you know, but thank God that Yeshua said he came to set the captive free. He came to break the bands of the prisoners. He spoke that and it, it didn't just mean uh, just the just the physical ailment that they were going through, but it was far reaching. It, it represented the, 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 the liberation of this whole planetary system of, from that. Okay, I kind of went a little bit too far in explanation. Let's go to uh, Fabre has a question. Hi, um, I was just wondering, it was kind of early on as well, when you spoke of um, walk-ins, uh -huh. I, I didn't fully understand, or maybe I missed what you said about that. Could you elaborate, please? Yeah, I, I'll give you a little bit of information, but there's a there's a wealth of information. Uh, Doris Cannon's information. If you don't know who Doris Cannon is, there's other uh, very knowledgeable people about it. But um, I had to find out what it was because I was I was told by some people I was a walk in at 42. In other words, uh, my physical body wanted to leave this planet so bad that it was allowed to okay. metamorphosis into my higher fraction soul self that could take on the rest of my life with the power of the light. And so I, I'm not saying I'm a walk-in. I'm just saying I've met walk-ins and there are evidence of people that they, instead of going the way of suicide, uh, they're, they call it a monad, a ninth monad. It gets off into new age, so you have to be careful when you go talking about um, walk-ins and monads. And, uh, but there are fractions of us that's in the seventh dimension, eighth dimension, and the ninth dimension. And so at certain points of a person's life, things can happen, and it can be considered a walk-in. One of the characteristics is I am not attached to my old life period i love my children but i'm not attached to their drama and that's just something i used to say to try to explain that the old me was too attached and it and things you know were too too real in attachments hmm. thank you that helps thank you very much thank you 
Okay, Ron, you're unmuted. Okay, uh, you may have just already answered the question. Uh, and, and, and this question to either you or John, um, how do you keep, with all the information that you guys are gathering, how do you keep your sanity? Who says we do? <laughs> That's a good question. Look, I want to tell you something. You got to be out of your mind to be able to, to have peace. You've got to be out of your mind. And um, I think Alan Watts is the one that quoted that that stuck with me the most. Um, it literally, being out of your mind is a good thing. It is. I was insane. I'm being honest with you, seriously. From, you know, with the learning disability being developmentally delayed as a child, not speaking till I was five. Uh, by the time I was 15, I really was like eight year old. By the time I was 20, I was like a 14 year old. I've had that problem all my life. Developmentally delayed is what they call it. But it is, it is a, uh, it is, a, you're able to go through that and really realize that <laughs> the old me was crazy. And I don't care what people say right now. It does, you know, because some of the things we're talking about, you got to be crazy to understand it. Oh, wait a minute. You got to be out of your mind to understand it. You got to be in your heart. Right, right. All right. Thank you, Ron. Okay, what we're going to do now is go into the breakout sessions. And uh, those of you, I think uh, there's going to be something come up on your screen. And you're just going to like click OK. And uh, I don't know whose room you're going to end up in. And so, uh, but just do that. I'm going to get Zariah to help me. He has to always help me do this. And so, okay, so what do you want me to do? Create? How many rooms? Okay. We're gonna So how do I do this? Just put, okay. Yeah, I think he's already in there. He's, okay. So, so how? Next so room? the next room is yeah. going to be. Uh, Who's going to be you know, in the next? Room? Okay. Uh, let's go down to. Uh, okay, this one here. Yeah, move that. So do I? Do I Okay, you may go. Uh, I think this is working. Okay, there yep. you go. Okay, I don't have a lot on yet. Uh, nine people have not gone. I mean, yeah, nine people have not gone. Okay. So just click OK and go into the room. Excellent. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's on. Mm, he is. Oh, I see Dr. Frazier. Yeah. Okay. So we got six people. Five people that have been in the breakout room. Okay, we got five people that needs to click OK and move into a breakout room, please. Four, okay. All righty. Now you can join people's room like one, two, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Keep going. Three, two. 
two more people I have in front of me. That's that's really good. Which one is this is not even one. Right. Which one is this? Um, there are certain things out there that is trying to um, down Christ consciousness inside of us to bring us into a state of death and into a state of um, doing what the people who are in control, like um, the higher ones, the fallen ones, those who are controlling, those who be in power, right? Trying to do what they are trying to get us to do to, so that we basically serve them. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, that was my understanding of it. And, you know, when he opened up, he actually said, you have control. He said, we have control over our health. I, I wrote it down. We speak life or death with our tongue. So that, that was pretty powerful. So even though all the advertisements, all the phones, we have the power, even in our own mouth, to speak life into anything, into any given situation. We have the power to change the molecular structure of the things we eat, the radiate the dirty light. And we, we do need to wake up. And I remember looking out my window and watching uh, the military line up and do the SWAT drills. And I had shared, um, you remember Bishop Winston was on, was on a couple of weeks ago or yeah, a couple of weeks ago. And, yeah. and he also had said, um, uh, just looking at the picture, the prophetic that was coming through. So, you know, I think that the, the thing is not to be alarmed and not to be confused and not to be overwhelmed, um, but know the end from the beginning and then watch it unfold and, and watch and pray and help others walk through it. Absolutely. Yes, Glenn, absolutely. Glenn, can you come on mute? off mute or mbtc if you'd like to come off mute we'd love to hear from you and maybe you're not able to i understand or maybe you don't feel comfortable and that's okay too you can just listen to david and i bat it around <laughs> Um, when it, when you mention about them having to reveal what they're going to do in some code form, I, I heard somewhere there's, um, there's actually, um, a scripture in the Bible. There's a, a law that they follow. It's something connected to that, that they, um, they do follow the Bible to cer a certain degree with certain things. You know, I, if, from what, what I heard, I don't remember exactly what it was, but and John is in the room right now. Can you come off mute and speak to that? Yes, they do. They do. They they know the scripture very well, and they uh, they follow it. They follow it uh, just more so than most believers, or Christians do, unfortunately. And uh, but they use it to their own advantage. They use it to enslave humanity because they understand the laws and stuff of it and uh yeah there there is an unspoken uh, code unspoken law that they must tell humanity what they're going to do before they do it however most people don't hear it and so that way their conscience are clear because we let them know we show them through hollywood we show them through science we show them through this or that but they were just too stupid to get it like you know and so they continue to do what they're doing. But yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. There was something else that was said that piqued my interest. Let's see if I wrote it down. It's, it's an afterworld matrix. 
that okay. mm -hmm. allow you back into the understanding to come back into the world mm -hmm. and play the game again. Okay. Uh, the way that they're giving us the information is that we don't have to go to the light. We are the light. Okay. So at that point, we break the cycle of life and death and reincarnation. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, it's, you know that no one has ever crossed over that's been able to come back and tell us, except the fact they've seen the white light and yeah. you know, they tell us they've seen a Christ figure or their mother or mm -hmm. somebody like that. Mm -hmm. The information that's coming forth is showing us that that's how diabolical this matrix is, that they've mm -hmm. actually fabricated a fake matrix yeah. in the afterlife uh -huh. to trick us. Yeah. And that's, that's soul trap. And that, okay. that way you can keep uh, a Christ conscious being forever, ever in a loop until mm -hmm. he, he gets the message. Matrix and newborns. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. But you know, um, what about you? You're cardiac, right? I'm now in dialysis, but I was okay. in, I've, we moved a lot. So okay. I've done, you know, ER, I've done critical care, I've done the floors and okay. yeah. But the data overload is, you know, kind of takes us away from what we're doing. It does. And Kelly, how are you feeling tonight? I know you're very spiritual and you're really tapped into the spirit. How are you feeling? What did you pull out tonight? Um, I love the class. Th that's interesting that we all have um, a nursing background because I do also. I'm a oh. stay-at-home mom right now, but um, uh, before I decided, I was a stay-at-home mom for quite a while. And then I went to work briefly because I finally got my dream job of being an elementary school nurse. Oh, um, decided to have more kids. So then now I'm back um, as a stay-at-home mom again. But it was very difficult it, for me to it just became very difficult to go to work and administer medication that I just have no I don't believe in in the healthcare system at all so tonight that way you that, that those are the best words you can speak those are the best things that you can speak and um hopefully that for those who are stuck in old ways that prayer can do a lot, you know, when you begin to speak, maybe it will change someone. Maybe it will change their thought process, doctrinal beliefs, and be open to the revelation of what God is doing as he is moving throughout the earth. Yeah, very interesting, uh, very interesting point here. Um, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy, it talks about judges, placing judges in all the gates of the city. And it's very interesting that of all the things going on, which um, Mr. Chad uh, Huggins was talking about, like um, all the things going on, we have the ability to place judges on the gate of our city. The Bible, call, the Bible says that we are a city, right, set on a hill. And we have gates that those are our eyes, our ears, our mind, our mouth, our nostrils. And we can be the judges that can place, we place actual filters on those gates that we have so that everything that is going on will not have any negative impact on us. Instead, we will actually um, become the light that we are by placing judges on our gate. So when we do that, we will we'll have a clear mind to be able to judge what is going on around us, but at the same time, because we place filters on the on the gates of our city, then all those negative things will not have an impact on us, but we will influence them because we are tapping into the great I am by placing those uh, but, but by placing those judges on our gates, we tap into the divine consciousness of God and we become more and more light and we have more influence on the things that goes on around us. So it's so important that, yes, we, we become enlightened. We know the things that are going on. We need to. Mm, I gotcha. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to continue. I'll be sure to pray upon that as well for you. Yeah, I know um, John is too. We're praying, we're praying to um, keep Dorian out to sea. So it yes. doesn't impact um, the coastland or Atlanta next week. Yes, absolutely. 
John handle going to work because I give lots of bills and um, even though they're older adults, they they're still God's people and. I know it's not helping them. I give I've given some people pills for years and they're not changing. I see that. But I when I talked to my pastor about it because it was that bad when I was in that church, um, she said, you know, you have to understand this is this this is their will for them, not you. And that kind of gave me peace. But now once again I'm back here. <laughs> yeah. I know it's not good. And blessings to you for being able to be an at home mom. I always want to Amen. Be Lord, I'm such a blessing. I can't even That's believe a gift. It. it really is. And I we have one it. minute to kind of wrap up, but oh, I think okay. it's a, it is important that we all, even though we're in the world, you know, we have to continue to just rise above and There's evidence that people do that successfully. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah, if you're finished learning all your lessons, you're going to be safe. You're going to be safe. But if you haven't learned everything that you're supposed to learn, you'll, you're destined to almost repeat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like re reincarnation, though, is it? Is, is, is that what you're saying? Something like that? It, well, it's, it gets, it, you know, because there's certain new age type things. It can get, it can get like learning who we are. So. I think they're gonna kick us out of our room again, but you know, just stay with him and be blessed. <laughs> I guess yeah, we're gonna get blessings yeah. to all of you. All right, I think we're coming back now. Everybody is coming back, I think. Okay. Ah, wow. Okay, looks like we're having fun. Are we having fun? <laughs> Let me get this uh, thing up here. Here we go, yeah, there we are. All right, um, thank you. We wanna just thank you again, buddy. Uh, for coming out and if anyone have any last question that you have uh, You can raise your hand now and we can get that answered and I know that you that were Blessed to be in buddy's uh, room that you got a lot of good information as well as the other uh, Rooms too. you receive much, but if there is uh, Any other uh, questions Just raise your hand now and we will go on Okay. All right. Looks like no other questions. Buddy, would you like to say anything else before you leave? Let me find you here. Okay. I'd just like to say thank you for inviting me back, and I really appreciate it. And just hope everyone understands that they, they've got to anticipate hearing it the way they need to hear it. And it will happen. Yes, it will. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I see Asher's hand is up. Okay, uh, let me unmute you. You unmuted? Yes, uh, the question I had was, um, I got here kind of late, so I don't know if he already explained uh, who the white heads were. 
It's white hats. Oh, white hats. Oh. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah. The, the so-called good guys. Um, it, that is a really tricky, tricky question. Um, of course, you don't, you know, in, in this type of warfare, you don't want to really give nobody's identity totally away. But, um, and you don't want to burst nobody's bubble when it comes to who is a good guy and who is a black guy, black head at that level, because it can, it, it, it can mess with your mind. Um, they show their true colors. We're use, I'm using the terminology of color, but it's not, you do know, it's not about race or anything like that. The, we say white hats, it's because good guys wear white hats. There's uh, just as many uh, multiracial people that are, are the good guys as they are the bad guys. And it, it's, it, I don't know who said it the best, but um, you judge somebody by the character. And um, in this disclosing of, of who are the bad guys, they give themselves away. And you'll see that the good guys are victorious. They don't have to speak in terminology of religion. Religious, it's got their back. But the true white hats have the true understanding of who we are and what the game really is. And they're at high levels of government and they're at high levels of military. And uh, so are you familiar with all the, all the um, generals that got fired? It's, it's, it was amazing. No, no, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, it, it could be easily looked up. Well, the ones that got fired are, are the bad guys. They were playing the, uh, a horrible game. And so, like I say, they give their hand away. And they've been really good at keeping their identity secret. So, but you can rest assured they're in, they're in, and they're for our, our benefit this time. For their, in other words, they're doing, they're doing good. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank all of you for coming out tonight to Rising Mystics Masterclass. And uh, we talk about everything here. We're here to educate you, to enlighten you, to empower you, and give you permission to think outside the box. And uh, we have Dr. Patrick is with us tonight. Do you want to say something, uh, Dr. Patrick? He's going to be speaking in the near future. Again, he was with us in phase one. Some of you remember him. I am unmuting you if you would like to speak or say something. Yeah, it's just a privilege to be with you guys. Actually, I'm in my call room right now in a hospital. Oh. It's a little quiet. <laughs> no, so, we'll let you go. <laughs> so, it's a little quiet here, so I decided to join you guys. <laughs> you know, uh, I think people are having the what, Labor Day, and so the ER is a little quiet here. So that's why I decided to join you guys here. Uh, so I just want to say I enjoy the class. I enjoy everything going on. Knowledge uh, is power. And when we have that knowledge, we are very powerful. If you are ignorant, we perish. And so all the things that we are learning here, yes, a lot of them are outside the box, but they are here to empower us to yes. be all that we've been created to be. So tap into all the knowledge that is coming here. And with time, I think we, we are learning at different levels. And so with time, some of the things, we, we are not grasping it maybe momentarily, but you're going to grasp it even as we grow um, together in this class. And this knowledge will set us free. Yeshua said, the truth that you know is what will set you free. Not the truth that John Lewis know, not the truth, not the truth that Buddy Huggins know, but the truth that you know, you know, that word know is the same word that was used in intimacy uh, between a man and a woman. Okay, that's the, that's the same word there where they know each other. So when you get to that point where you know the truth, it will really will set you free from every area of our life. And for us to be all that we are created to be, to accomplish the mission 
that a great I am gave to us on this planet called Earth. So I love you guys and hope, hopefully I'll be able to join you more frequently. And uh, just remember, you are a light being. And you are not separated from the great I am. We are all one in this cloud of witness. We, it's, it's a cloud, you know, that we are all one and interconnected, intertwined. <laughs> and uh, Paul mentioned that, right? That we are all connected with the great I am. So do not separate yourself from him because in him we live and move and have our being. Love you all. And I hope to be with you guys again in the next session. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Dr. Patrick, for chiming in from the hospital there in the ER. We just appreciate you and all of you that came out want you guys to be lifting us up. There are some of us in the class that will be traveling this weekend. We'll be going to Atlanta, Georgia for the School of Prophets. And Dr. Suzanne is going. Yay! Avery is going. And uh, eventually, uh, some of you others will be going to various places. And uh, as we go and minister and be light, and it's going to be very exciting. So we lifted me up. I'll be leaving on Friday. Uh, it actually starts on Thursday. But I'll be leaving Friday, and I'm speaking Saturday. And so really just be sending some energy that way because we're going to just, like, go completely out the box. And Bishop Winston told me, he says, just do your thing. Just, just. Just speak, speak about mysticism, the mystical things. I said, okay, all right. <laughs> and so we're going to have fun, and it's going to be exciting. People are going to be enlightened. Their eyes are going to be open. They're going to see things they've never seen before, hear things they haven't heard before, but they already know it is within them, so it's going to just resonate, and they're just going to be lifted to a whole new level of consciousness. All right, so uh, bless you guys. And I have a good week, and we're yet praying for those of you on the uh, East Coast and uh, all over. And we know that you're safe because you're in him. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's where you are, so you're blessed. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, man. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Love you. Appreciate you. Told you it was going to be good. <laughs> Appreciate it. Bye. Yes, sir. All righty.